Welcome back. Today we are talking fashion and the outfits that we all wear every day hmm. for Mommy Monday. It's not really about how our clothes look, but more about how they're actually made. Joining us now is Alden Wicker. She's an award-winning journalist, sustainable fashion expert, and founder of EcoCult. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, this is a fascinating topic, That one that I never really gave two cents about, but now I'm concerned, mm -hmm. and I, this is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you should be concerned. Uh, a lot of people believe that the toxic fashion pollution we hear about only happens in other countries, but a lot of those same toxic chemicals are staying on our clothing all the way to our closets. And I think what's concerning is if they're on our clothing, what does that mean for our health? You know, you hear about some of uh, the toxins around us, right, in our foods that really give us a visceral reaction sure. physically and you get sick. Can the same be said about toxic chemicals in our clothing? Absolutely. A lot of the things that people are switching out right now, uh, clothing has the same type of chemicals. So the things that have been found in clothing just in the last decade include lead, BPA, and phthalates, which are both hormone-disrupting chemicals. You might have heard about them in that big uh, baby bottle scare, and you, know, you see BPA-free bottles. So that has also been found in a lot of workout clothes. Um, lead and phthalates have also been found in high amounts in children's clothing. Um, and uh, clothing has caused reactions uh, in normal people, rashes, things like that. So um, we really should be concerned about all of these chemicals, even though clothing, unlike a lot of the things you just talked about, cleaning products, beauty products, um, food, it doesn't come with an ingredient list. It only lists the fiber content. Right. So yeah. I think if people really saw the full amount of chemicals that were in their clothing, they would be really shocked. So Alden, it's not just like where Nicole and I could pick up an article of clothing and read the tag. It's not going to be labeled on that tag, right? No, absolutely not. And that's scary, especially, you know, when you have newborns and, you know, kids, because sure. I'm, I'm assuming that those age groups are most sensitive to these kinds of toxins. They are, you know, they have smaller bodies, they're growing. So those hormone disrupting chemicals that I just talked about, you know, also including PFAS, which has been in the news lately um, because of several lawsuits against both the maker, 3M, and also, a, you know, a period panty brand that had it in there. Um, so uh, these are hormone disrupting chemicals and they especially affect little bodies like that. And also a lot of these chemicals that are on clothing, um, they come off. You know, they get into your house dust. And a researcher who's also a mother uh, from Duke told me she was really concerned about kids, you know, crawling around on the floor, putting their hands in their mouths and putting whatever is in those uh, polyester, synthetic performance finishes in their mouth and ingesting them. Hmm. Talk to us about the book. It's called To Die For, How Toxic Fashion is Making Us Sick. I mean, uh, maybe you can give us one instance where we might not know about something that's in there. Oh, God, there's so many different things. Uh, so, um, well, I first found out about this because a lot of flight attendants have been getting sick. Four different major airlines introduced new, uh, new uniforms over the past decade, and each time up to 20% of the attendants were uh, reporting really severe reactions. Some of them went completely bald. They had rashes so bad oh that they God. bled. Um, they experienced extreme fatigue. Some of them had to be taken off the plane and taken to the ER with breathing problems. Wow. Oh. And uh, they figured it out because they could all talk to each other and say, hey, this is happening to you. But if we had toxic clothing that was causing these same reactions, we might never figure out what was happening to us. Exactly. Mm. And, um, you know, as a parent here, I'm going, so what kind of clothes should I look for for my kids to make sure that they're safe? I, you know, like 100% organic cotton. Where do we go to make sure that we know what's in our clothes? Well, there's some good news. The federal government in the United States only regulates children's clothing when it comes to three different chemicals. So there is a tiny bit of extra regulation for children's products, uh, particularly. But I would say some of the first things you should do is only buy from brands that you trust. Mm -hmm. Some of these, uh, you know, the lead and phthalates was found in Xi'an clothing and Zaffel clothing that had been imported straight from China. Um, so avoid super, super cheap, ultra fast fashion from brands that, um, you know, have labels like Blue Sign and Okotex. 
natural fibers, you know, not a hard and fast rule, but they tend to be less toxic and better for our children's skin as well because polyester comes with sensitizing dispersed dyes. So um, also avoid performance products. So I know moms love to get stain resistant and stain proof things, but usually that's achieved with incredibly toxic chemistry. That's fascinating. This is so eye-opening. Thank you so much, Alden, for this information. Thank you for having me. Wow.